In this video, we're going to discuss whether you can have a valid Section 351 transaction when one of the transferors is transferring services to the corporation. So just a quick review, the three requirements for a Section 351 transaction are that the transferors transfer property solely in exchange for the corporation's stock, and then they have control, which is 80% of vote and value, immediately afterwards. So the question is, what if one of the transferors is also providing services to the corporation in exchange for the corporation's stock? Does that person count as part of the control group for purposes of determining whether they have 80% of the vote and value afterwards? And the answer, the short answer is no, but there's, it's a little more complicated than that. But let me give you an example. So let's say that you, you own a Ferris wheel and it costs uh, 100,000, that's your basis in it. And it has fair market value of 975,000, it's appreciated. And so you form a corporation called Seven Flags Amusement Park and you transfer the Ferris wheel that you own, this is your property, you're transferring to the corporation in exchange for 60 shares of stock, of, of voting stock in Seven Flags Amusement Park, right? And let's just assume that also your friend Tito is providing some services, maybe Tito is a lawyer or an accountant, and he says, you know what, I'll provide, free, I'll, I'll provide these services in exchange for 40 shares. So, so in total, Let's just say this is a startup company, and, and so in total, there are 100 shares of stock of this Seven Flags Amusement Park. And so you, you own 60 shares, and your friend Tito owns 40 shares, right? But Tito didn't transfer any property. He performed services in exchange for those shares. So now here's the question. Remember, we have that 80% of vote and value to qualify for a Section 351 transaction because we need to know your property has gone up $875,000 in value. So the question is, do we recognize that? Do you have a recognized gain here of $875,000 on the transfer of your of that Ferris wheel? Do you meet this 80% of vote and value? You've definitely, you've transferred property in exchange for stock, right? So you've met the first two requirements, but do you meet the 80% because Tito is performing services? And the answer is no. You do not meet the 80% because Tito, since he's only performing services, then Tito does not count as part of the control group, right? So if Tito was uh, just contributing cash, for example, instead of services, then you would have 100% because you consider both your shares and you would consider Tito's shares. Everyone who's part of the control group, right? It's not just you. So, but Tito is performing services, so he's not part of the control group. So we say, okay, well, you, you get 60 shares out of 100. That's 60%. So after this transaction, you do not have... 60 per, or you do not have 80 percent of the vote and value of the corporation so you would be you would be taxed on an eight hundred seventy five thousand dollar gain right you would be taxed when you transfer this ferris wheel to the corporation and you say hey that's a lot of money that's a big tax bill i'm going to get is there something i can do well yes there is an exception though so if tito so if the person that is transfer or performing services if they also contribute property right so if he did services and property in exchange for the shares of stock then you could have a situation where tito is considered part of the control group and so his 40 shares would be considered with your 60 and then you'd have in this case you'd have 100 out of 100 equals 100 percent. so then you meet the control requirements now here's the question how much property, right? How much property does Tito have to transfer? Could Tito put in $1 and say, okay, yeah, I've did some services in exchange for these 40 shares. Yeah, I don't want you to get hit with an $875,000 tax bill. Here's $1. Here's $1. So I've contributed property and services. That does not count. Okay, so there's basically a, a minimum threshold that the IRS uses, and it, it's basically 10%. So you look at the fair market value you look at the fair market value of the stock that Tito is receiving, right? And so let's say that the fair market value of the stock that Tito is receiving is $650,000, right? So then basically we, we multiply that by 10% to see if we meet this threshold. So we multiply that by 10% and that's going to give us $65,000, okay? So the property that Tito is transferring in addition to the services he's providing, uh, providing, must be worth at least, 
like 10 percent of the fair market value of the stock right so he can't contribute like a dollar let's say he was contributing cash it doesn't have to be cash it could be a machine it could be whatever right another type of amusement ride but let's just say cash if it was cash that tito said he'd it, he'd it can't be a dollar it would have to be at least sixty five thousand dollars because then that would say okay this isn't a nominal amount that's what the irs is is worried about is he just uh, transferring a nominal amount of a dollar or ten dollars and then he's really just providing services and the property's not really property or is he actually contributing a significant amount so if tito says okay well i will also contribute sixty five thousand dollars cash cash is property right so cash is property so then tito would be providing services and property and it wouldn't be a nominal amount of property and so then tito would be considered part of the control control group now do you then say well tito didn't contribute all property it was you know mostly services do we then say well we need to say take 10 percent of his 40 shares or something like that that might be valid thinking but that's not what we do we say all right if tito qualifies by meeting that 10 percent threshold then we count all 40 of his shares and so now you've got the control group is you and tito so you're contributing 60 shares he's contributing 40 so you have a hundred of a hundred shares you control all 100 shares after you've made the transfer and so now the control group owns a hundred percent so from your perspective your perspective you would have now have this eight hundred seventy five thousand dollars would be deferred you don't pay tax on it right now this deferred recognition now just one point that's worth mentioning so let's say that tito let's just let's go back to the situation where tito says you know what i don't want to contribute this sixty five thousand dollars cash i don't have that or whatever we know you're gonna hit, get hit with the tax bill but we might wonder well what happens to tito what happens to tito if he does not contribute any cash or anything like that and, and we know that you're going to get that eight hundred seventy five thousand dollar tax bill but what about tito well tito if he just only contributes services and then gets six hundred fifty thousand dollars of of stock then tito is going to be taxed on that as income basically tito got six hundred fifty thousand dollars of income so for providing the services he's going to be taxed on that immediately as well